Hello guys, welcome back to this very last video of 2018. I am going to be working on my monochromatic watercolour paintings today and I thought I would do more of a real-time type of video so we would get a chance to catch up before the end of the year. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to get started with it and we'll talk as we go. The first colour scheme that we'll be working on today will be a very heavily blue one, uh, so of course it had to be a water-related landscape. There are some really gorgeous blues in this set of watercolours, so I was really spoilt for choice for these ones. In terms of how I picked the colours, because that was a question that I did get and I thought I would use this video as an opportunity to answer some of your questions, um, I have this swatch set of course that I did of all the colours in the Holbein watercolour set. If you want to know more about these watercolours and why I have them in these um, palettes like this you can check out the very first video that I did in this short series. Uh, but yeah I swatched all of them just to see what I had and how they all looked next to each other and then I basically just went through them one at a time thinking um, which ones do I want to pick to create a small four colour palette of its own. So looking at these yellows, for example, um, these four that to start with are quite similar. So I would only pick maybe one of those and then maybe more of a warm one, more of a uh, brownie one. Um, so that's essentially how I came up with my palette. Same thing with like oranges, maybe do pale orange, a more bright orange, more of a red and more of a deep red. And I just went along the swatches like that, just coming up with um, I think 16 altogether different palettes of four colours that all were within the same kind of colour family but had slight differences and enough um, variation between them to have them stand out uh, within a painting altogether. Another question that I constantly get is what tape I'm using and as always it is just um, washi tape, it's just very basic um, thin washi tape. Nothing special, um, if I do have trouble getting it off the paper without ripping it then I will just use a hairdryer to warm it up a bit. Another question that I've had quite often is whether or not I'm sketching my paintings before I start them and um, in most cases I have done a really quick sketch like I'm doing now, just really basic, um, just to kind of lay in where I'm going to want certain shapes but I have found um, that the less I plan the more I seem to like how the paintings turn out so like with that one I don't even know if you can see that but it's just very light lines um, that I might not even stick to. I have done a few kind of preliminary like really quick thumbnail sketches so um, these ones were from the last video I think um, and that's really helped just to get an idea of where things are going to go and how big they'll be and where I'm going to use lighter and darker colours to make things stand out. But for this particular painting I ha actually haven't done one of those so we'll see how that goes. And another question I've had is what brush I'm using. So before we start here it is, it's the uh, Jackson's Studio Synthetic. It is a uh, size 4 um, round brush and I just got it in a set, I think, of a few different brushes from Jackson's. Um, but it's been a good, good, good brush so far. Right, I'm going into this one with very little planning and because I'm also talking while I paint, I'm not 100% sure how well it's going to turn out, but I think it'll be a nice simple one to get me back into the swing of these paintings. I haven't really made much art apart from one commission that I've been working on. If you saw my last video about taking time off over the holidays, I have been trying to um, kind of wind down with how much work I'm doing. That hasn't actually worked out that well so far, but after this today, um, I think I'm going to be off until maybe the 5th of January. Um, I'm actually going away tomorrow to Cardiff, so I'm going to be spending New Year's there and uh, yeah, I'm just going to be completely shut off from work and everything, which will be lovely. It'll be nice to have that proper separation and spend some time out of the city. Spend some time with friends. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. I've never been to Wales. Um, and I feel like one of my goals for this year was to do more traveling within the UK, which I definitely didn't do. I went to Birmingham for the first time ever, so that kind of counts, but I think I've said before that I've never actually been to another country within the UK, so, you know, Scotland and Wales and Ireland. 
Uh, so yeah, that was one of my goals for this year and I'm finally, right at the end of the year, managing to achieve that. And I'm hoping to kind of expand on that next year. I wanna do more kind of local trips and holidays, spend more time um, exploring the stuff around me, I spend a bit more time in nature, um, just as much as I can really. Having this little color palette down here really helps with being able to visualize how each color is gonna look next to each other, even though they're all different shades of blue. Um, some of them obviously look more like sea blues. Um, this one that I'm about to use, the cerulean blue, I see as more of a sky blue, so I'm gonna use it up here. And I generally just try to stay away from touching any fresh paint, so I'll jump around the painting um, to allow different areas to dry before I start layering and um, putting different shapes next to each other. I think this is the least planning that I've done for one of these paintings, so uh, we'll see how it turns out. One thing that I'm trying to keep reminding myself of is that I really want to work on having these just flat shapes uh, rather than loads of kind of variation within them. I do want to see if I can layer up this blue area to get it to that deeper blue that I've got there on the swatch, but we'll see. Right, so this is where it might get a little bit more difficult. Trying to get that look of like um, waves and those white areas peeking through of the kind of froth of the water. It would probably help if I looked at a picture of this because at the moment I'm trying to figure it out from memory and I can't actually remember what it's supposed to look like. But that does tie into another question that I've got a couple of times about whether or not I'm using references for these paintings and for the first time I'm really not using references all that much at all, I kind of will get an idea for each painting and um, I might go on Pinterest and look at different things, like for this one obviously I would go on Pinterest and look at different pictures of the sea and see if there's anything that's going to spark an idea there, um, but then I'll just head straight to that little sketchbook I showed you earlier and start working on some thumbnail sketches. So yeah, not using references and that's quite an achievement for me, quite kind of liberating and I am proud of myself for being able to do that. That's, I think one of my kind of consistent goals with art is to be able to uh, generate and develop ideas without the help of references as much. Um, you definitely, I think, always need some form of reference, especially with stuff that you've never drawn before, but it would be nice to be able to really flesh out an idea from my imagination as much as I possibly can. One of the good things about filming while I'm painting is that I get to see like a full view of whatever I'm working on in this viewfinder, um, just a full overhead shot of it, which always helps to keep things kind of in perspective and keep a good view of how big things are just the scale of everything and the balance of everything all as one piece. It's okay, it kind of, kind of looks how I want it to look, but I think I might benefit from having a look at a reference picture just to get myself fully on track, I guess. If anything, this can be kind of my warm-up painting for the day. Um, I think I've said already, but I'm trying not to put too much pressure on myself with these paintings. Um, do just want to experiment and have fun with them. And if it comes to it, I'll always be happy to go back and redo certain ones if I feel like I could have done better once I've kind of picked up on the lessons that I want to learn from each painting. I don't think there's anything wrong with going back and redoing the ones that I don't particularly like.
Another question that I've been getting has been regarding whether or how I'm coming up with um, the ideas for each painting. Um, and I'm kind of following my usual approach with a painting challenge. What I do like about a painting challenge is having a theme, so um, it kind of really narrows down the amount of ideas that you can have. And I think that is an issue with coming up with ideas, just the overwhelming amount that is out there to paint. So instead of it just being a blue painting that could be anything, it could be the sky, it could be a lollipop, it could be a blue pencil, it could be, you know, anything. And there's so much choice out there that it can be a bit overwhelming. Um, having it narrowed down to landscapes or types of landscape um, has really helped with coming up with ideas because blue could be the sky, it could be the sea, it could be a river, it could be, you know, other blue things, other blue landscapes, but it really narrows it down, especially having a few different blue palettes that I'm going to be working with that has really filled up a lot of the options that are out there. Um, so yeah, having a limited theme to go with the paintings definitely helps with coming up with ideas and it, they kind of just generate themselves the ideas, like the colours will spark the idea by themselves just because when you look at um, say something like this and you're thinking of a landscape you would think of a field or a forest or um i don't know any other green landscape but you know what i mean it's just a lot simpler um, and a lot easier to come up with something when you have that limit on yourself so it is kind of coming along more or less how i want it to at the moment uh which is very promising I'm not 100% sure how it's going to turn out in the end, but we'll just see how we get on. I was planning on working on all three of these paintings for this video, uh, as I've been doing with the previous videos, but I think the talking and painting at the same time does slow me down a bit, and um, I don't want to rush it. I do just want to enjoy this painting process, uh, but I am in a bit of a hurry just because we are leaving for Cardiff tomorrow and there's a lot to prepare before we go. But I'm looking forward to that trip. Um, it'd be nice to do something different for New Year's and hopefully get that New Year started in a good headspace um, compared to the start of this year, which was a really tough one for me. And I know I talked about it a bit in videos. I think my January vlog, I think, title of it was about you know having an existential crisis but yeah really it was so difficult motivating myself at the start of this year I really didn't know what I wanted and what I was doing um, and it took a good few months to get into any kind of rhythm of doing anything um, and it took a long time to kind of figure out why as well and part of it is seasonal around this time of year I'm always going to feel a bit down but also I think the goals that I was setting for myself just didn't really resonate with me. They just felt like goals that I was setting uh, because it felt like the goals that I should have. You know, I had different like subscriber goals and business goals and stuff like that. And while that is important to an extent, it really didn't, there wasn't really a why behind it. It just felt like the kind of thing that I should have as my goals. Um, and so I really had no real drive to do anything with that and um, just spend my time trying to get to those goals because deep down they didn't really they just weren't really that important to me or as important as they should have been to make up you know the main drive of my year and I was actually looking back at one of the first videos that I put out at the start of this year which was actually my 2018 goals um, I think it was specifically art goals and uh, it's always interesting to look back at the start of the year and what you wanted and what you had planned. So my first goal was to refine my art style, which I said in that video I was pretty, pretty happy with. Um, and even watching that video, I really liked the painting that I did. But yeah, quite soon after that, I really lost my way with my art style, I think. But just because I wanted to do something different and I'm still in that place where I just want to experiment and have fun. Um, there's so many different things that I like and want to do, so I think I have to kind of try all of them to narrow down what it is that I'm going to stick with. Um, not to say that there's only going to be one thing that I'm going to stick with, it's more just allowing myself to try all the things and not pinpointing one thing and saying this is it now. Um, just kind of having fun and 
doing all the things and seeing if one of them really stands out to me. Um, another goal was to learn, 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 uh, which I'm focusing a lot more on now towards the tail end of the year. And I definitely focused more on at the start of the year, but I did lose track of somewhere in the middle. Um, I also said that I wanted to read a book a month, which I definitely didn't do. I started a lot of books, but didn't manage to finish any just because I'd end up getting distracted. Um, so I'm hoping to at least finish the books that I started this year. Um, next year. I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing right now. One goal that I know I didn't achieve was to make more art on a bigger scale and I don't think I did any of that really. I don't, can't think of one thing that I've made um, in a larger scale basically. Uh, I did recently invest in a few canvases and like canvas boards and stuff because that is a goal that I do want to work on and the first step is to at least buy the things that I'll need for that so I now have a few kind of visual prompts around me of blank canvases that need art on them um, so yeah that is something I definitely want to continue or even just start to work on in the new year And I think my final goal was to document my year in my art journal. Uh, again, I was much stronger on that at the start of the year. Definitely have not been doing that so much recently. Uh, but I have a few good memories stored in there and a few good videos as well of journaling. Um, I do like having this YouTube channel as a kind of diary of all the things that I've done. It's nice to look back on old vlogs, um, especially now that I've been doing it over a year. I can look back at all the different things that I've done as far as the personal goals that I had for this year, which I don't think I did share, but I had them written down um, just in one of my notebooks that I had a look back on a couple of days ago. Um, one of my goals was to work with a big brand, which um, I didn't really specify in what capacity I wanted to work with a big brand, but um, that definitely happened for me, I would say, uh, this year. I think I worked with two big, big brands. Um, those were on more of a social media marketing front but it was still a really cool experience and um just kind of a once in a lifetime type of thing where the different parts of it that go into it are things that I normally would never have been able to do I guess so that's been really fulfilling and exciting this year. Another goal of mine was to have a dedicated workspace for my art um, and at the time of writing that my plan was to separate my bedroom into having a studio space and my living space which I did do uh, but little did I know that I would then end up 10 months later having a whole flat <laughs> and a whole room dedicated to my art which is really quite amazing when I stop and think about it. One of my main goals, as I kind of touched on earlier, was to really work on rebranding and committing to my YouTube channel and really growing it this year. Uh, I think I had the goal of about 500,000 subscribers. And looking back at that, it just seems so strange because that doesn't matter to me. And I don't know if I thought at the beginning of the year that it mattered to me and that's how I ended up getting so lost in my values and what I wanted and what was driving me but I know now at least that those numbers as cool as they are and as grateful as I am for subscribers they don't mean as much you know it, it means more to connect with people I guess than just to see those numbers so I think um, I needed to learn more of the why uh, behind it and that was something that I started the year not really understanding you know, it's really easy to set these goals that just make sense on paper, but really have no real meaning in life, in day-to-day -day life. And I also said that I potentially would like to have a manager. Um, and I think I just wanted that for, I don't know, getting new deals, new brand deals and whatever. And um, having now worked with a massive company, uh, a couple of massive companies, and I've had offers now from different social media managers uh, and I've realised that again that's not really something I'm interested in and even those kinds of brand deals as amazing as they are aren't as much of a priority for me anymore at this stage. Um, I'm more interested in you know if I could expand on my 
goal from last year of wanting to work with big brands. I would like it to be more in a creative capacity, more um, art related, more commission related. I've done a couple of really cool commissions this year, um, one of them being the album artwork that I did for uh, a local musician around here in South East London, uh, but also a couple of bigger companies, um, but none of those have come out yet, so I can't actually talk about them. Um, one of them I actually just sent off yesterday or the day before and I'm really really excited for that to come out. I think you guys would like it as well. Um, another one that I just have no idea when that's going to be um, revealed I guess but it's been fun, it's been really cool to be able to be that artist and I think that experience has helped me figure out that that is something that I do want to focus on more this year or in 2019. I wanted to spend more time doing artwork for things and less time doing work for brands um, that's like social media related, I guess. One of my other more personal goals was to go on holiday with Ozzy, um, which is so weird to think about. That was just the start of this year where we had never been away together. Um, I'd actually written down that I wanted us to go to Scotland and we ended up going to Lisbon, which was just as amazing, but I do want to go to Scotland this year. But yeah, that is a goal achieved and well worth it. Had such a great time. And I also wanted to go on holiday with my mum and my sister. Um, at the time of writing those goals, I, we had already booked our holiday, so I kind of cheated that one because I knew that we were going on holiday, but we did have the most amazing trip to um, California and to Hawaii. And yes, I'm going to work on those videos at some point. Um, I did film it all and I am and I have got like half an art journal full of drawings and paintings from those trips. Um, so yeah, just be patient with me. I need to get on with that at some point, but it's hard looking back at all those pictures and videos and not just like yearning to be back there. And I think my final goal for 2018, my final personal goal was to spend more time with friends, which I, definitely didn't do. I think this has probably been my worst year for hanging out with um, my friends, which is quite sad to say really, it's, and it's all on me. Um, I'm terrible at getting in touch with people and I'm so surprised that people still have that patience for me to continue to reach out even though most of the time I say no, I don't want to come out or I'm busy or I'm working and then they never kind of hear from me in return. Um, but that is something that Obviously, I've been very lucky to have understanding friends, but I don't want to take advantage of that. So that is probably one of my biggest priorities for the new year to really um, give back to my friends and spend more time with them. I'm liking the painting, but I feel like it's missing something, like it's got no real direction to it. I think it needs more kind of definition let me know if this format of video is really boring. I know that this is normally a painting that would take about half an hour at most, um, and I know it's not the most complicated thing to watch, um, but yeah, I think I've been recording for about 45 minutes now, and hopefully I'll be able to edit it down, but um, talking and painting at the same time is kind of difficult, and I do kind of like stopping to chat, and the painting part of it for me is quite secondary. Um, I like painting and talking because it helps me relax a bit and not zone in on the painting and uh, lose sight of the bigger picture. Like I find my paintings when I'm doing it real time like this tend to be a lot looser and I end up with something that I didn't necessarily plan. But yeah, just to follow on from that, my goals for 2019, um, as well as the things that I said I want to work on that I didn't get to in 2018. The main thing for me, instead of kind of having those specific goals, uh, like financial and business and whatever goals, I really just want to stick to getting back to some kind of consistency and just a better balance in life. And those that's all I really want for 2019. I feel like if I can nail that, then I will be sorted. If I can get a good if I can stop being so all or nothing, basically, I know that I will either have days like today where I get up on time and I work all day, um, or I have days where I just stay in bed all day and I need to get up and work and then do some staying in bed, you know, in one day instead of 
committing so much time to one thing and then losing track of the other things and um, within those two massive things that I do with the procrastinating and the overworking um, there's no time for the other things like spending time with my friends so I feel like once I've and it's such a simple thing as well it is really just a case of not procrastinating honestly most of the time just getting up and getting out of bed and doing the things I need to do and not talking myself out of it and then I won't have to have those days that are full-on um working non-stop so yeah that is that's really all I want and that's all I ever really want that's like always one of my big goals but um I think because I don't have that noise of all those other goals like drink water every day and exercise and meditate and journal like all I'm sticking to this year at least for the first few months is that consistency and that balance um and that should hopefully lead to the rest of those things falling into place but that's not what I'm going to focus on I'm just focusing on um having a good a good balance of work and life um, I've written down here, work, socialise, learn, explore, watch loads of films and read loads of books. And that is really all I want. I'm a simple girl. I don't want much. Um, but yeah, I just want to travel. You know, I want to get out there. And like I said, I want to spend more time in the UK, just doing like a long weekend somewhere. Just making sure that I'm getting out um, and seeing the world and just seeing nature. Um, I think that is something I really missed out on this year and being in Maui was incredible and just an absolute dream and if I could be there 24 7 I would um but it just gives you so much to be out there in the world it just gives you so much inspiration and like it just refuels you to be out in nature and see new things and just be I don't know have your toes in the grass and hear the trees blowing in the wind and I know it sounds so airy fairy but it really is like therapy I feel like we all need it we all need that and we don't get enough of it especially like me if you live in the city I might I might be done with this one what do you guys think do you think it needs more or am I gonna overwork it I'd love to know what your goals are as well for 2019 if you have any specific ones or if you're gonna be more broad I know that some people like to have just a word to um kind of live by for the new year so it'd be interesting to hear if anyone has a word or a theme that they're living by or a specific goal or a few specific goals um I know that everyone kind of works differently and I've tried all sorts of different things and I think that this year just sticking to you know if I can wake up in the morning and roll over and not want to get up but re just remind myself every morning those two words balance consistency like that should be a lot easier than thinking, okay, I have to get up this morning, I have to meditate and I have to journal and I have to re drink water and I have to do all that before nine o'clock. Um, it just seems a lot more achievable for me. I think I might uh, call this finished soon before I do too much. I think it'll be one of those ones that I redo um, at the end my plan is to redo some of the ones that I'm not entirely keen on because I like I like it but it's not it's not all there I think I need to practice painting um like the way that water breaks um and I need to figure out a way of doing that anyway we'll leave that for now um I'll let that dry before I take the tape off and we'll start on the next one, but we'll see how far we get. If not, I'll just end this video with a time lapse. This is another one that I think might just benefit from having a first try um with it because i again don't have a good kind of mental image of what i want it to look like i don't have any practice drawing or painting anything like this so i am just approaching it as more of a practice one and if it turns out cool enough to uh have as an actual piece then cool but otherwise i'm not averse to just redoing it and you know trying again with a bit more experience with it under my belt so um the color scheme for this one 
as I was saying with before, you look at it, you see something. And I think that it's quite a watery colour scheme still, but this this blue in particular, I think this is peacock blue, just reminded me of like a glacier, like, um, yeah, they're called glaciers, right? Where when the ice is really blue and, and white, I'm so bad at describing things, but I feel like you know what I mean. And if you don't, you'll get to know as I paint. I'll try and spend a bit less time on this one, but we'll see how that goes. Maybe more painting, less talking, which I know some people would appreciate. See, don't you think that's such an icy blue colour? I think this will be more of a, a layering one. I quite like what I did with uh, the coral reef. That one relied quite heavily on layering and I think that was quite effective. Um, but then in that case, I did do a bit more planning. Um, this is another one that I don't really have even a thumbnail sketch for. Um, but I did at least think a little bit more about the process of this one. So we'll see if that pays off. But like I said, not too, not too concerned about how it turns out. Um, I'm obviously going to try to make something uh, that looks good, but I'm also just looking to try it and have fun with it. I know this video might seem like it's a bit all over the place and maybe it is, but I just wanted to be able to finish off the year with something a bit more um, intimate, a bit more kind of personal, a nice kind of chit chat. I know that the last two videos that I've done were sponsored, which is just never something that I wanna do. Um, so I appreciate how well you've received those and how understanding you are of that. It wasn't the plan to have two sponsored videos in a row or even as many sponsored videos as I've had coming out recently. That is something that I am aware of. So um, yeah, I am grateful that you guys are understanding of that. Yeah, I wanted to be able to come on here and just talk to you more one-to-one. -one. Um, with my sponsored videos, I do always try to make sure that they are still valuable and still just genuine videos from me. Like I always, when I get a sponsored video, will just go through my video idea list and make a video that I was already planning on making and tie a sponsorship into it. So if you ever feel in doubt of whatever I'm saying in sponsored videos, um, just know that it's a video that I was already gonna make and I had probably already already um, like written the notes for. So any point I'm making in it is genuine. Um, I just kind of add the sponsored stuff on top. I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing here, but I'm just going to keep adding some geometric shapes, I guess. I feel like that's working decently so far. I also just kind of wanted to finish off this video by looking back at some of the highlights for the year, which has just gone so quickly when you actually think about it. It just feels like 2018 flew by. But for recent highlights, I would say um, I got to go and see Dreamgirls recently, uh, a couple of weeks ago. I got to go and see that at the Savoy with my mum and my sister, and it was really, oh, the main singer in that was just out of this world amazing. Like, I was almost in tears through most of that show just because her voice was unreal. Um, and it was just a great show overall. I like Dreamgirls. I might watch the film again now that I've seen um, the stage show just because it's a good old story and, it's got some good songs in it. I do like a musical. 
sometimes I get halfway through these paintings and realise that there's a whole colour that I haven't used yet. <laughs> also, little secret behind the scenes, I do have the names of all the colours written on the back here just to kind of help me along the way and I will put a little dot underneath it in the palette so I know which ones to go for. Oh, another highlight, and I'm just throwing this in so I can show you this footage, but um, Ozzy's parents recently got a new puppy and they brought him round uh, a few weeks ago and he just spent the day with us. I had just had my two fillings done, my face was numb, I had just spent 400, over 400 pounds at the dentist, I was not happy, I was just feeling so sorry for myself and there they came with this puppy um, and they went out shopping so Ozzy and I had him for the day, his name's Monty and he is a... I'm really not good at dog breeds. He is a Border Terrier and he is just such a sweetheart. He's an absolute gem. I love him and now I really want a puppy uh, or, or just a little dog or a cat. Just any, any little companion, maybe a rabbit. My sister's got two rabbits, but I mean, we're not allowed pets here, so I don't know why I'm getting carried away with myself. I'm really grateful for the traveling that I've been able to do this year, going to Lisbon back in spring. That was really awesome, um, really nice city. Um, and just, I feel like the perfect holiday for Ozzy and I, um, especially for our first one together. We definitely had a lot of fun out there. Could have done with better weather, but other than that, it was a great trip. And then obviously that trip to um, LA with my mom and my sister and San Francisco as well and then Maui which just is somewhere that I will never forget honestly it's just somewhere that I will always dream of going back to it's obviously quite an investment of a place to visit but so worth it to do at least once and just such such a great trip one thing that I remembered as well, looking back at my memories for this year, um, to like looking back at old vlogs and stuff, was the Kendrick Lamar concert, you know, Ozzy's mum bumping into his publisher by chance and him giving us VIP tickets, and that concert just on its own being, like, oh, just, just like, <laughs> life-changing. Um, that was, that was an amazing experience, and that's something that, I don't know, you just can't, really trade for anything else in life, like those kinds of experiences. I'm quite liking this. I'm quite liking how this is coming along. We'll see if I ruin it, but so far it's kind of becoming what I wanted it to be. I wonder how many times I've said kind of in this video. It's one of those things I always catch myself saying when I'm editing. Um, I've also heard myself saying obviously a lot. I don't know why everything is so obvious. Another highlight for the year, which is more of a personal achievement kind of thing, I guess, is just really getting out of my comfort zone work-wise, um, just from starting the year still not even accepting phone calls, which I know might sound really lame to some people, but just because of how anxious I get um, and socially awkward I can be, I would always just communicate with people through email um, with any job opportunities. And it got to a point where that wasn't an option anymore. And that really forced me to start accepting phone calls. And that led to going to in-person meetings, which I never thought I would be able to do. Um, so it's really been a huge leap for me in just like social confidence and like the work that I've done this year has really helped with that. Like working with Sprite and with Intel has really pushed me to do more and um, go out there on my own and do these things and, you know, go to meetings and conferences and stay in hotels and be that person that I just never imagined myself being and being able to do that on my own. Um, so it's been a huge year for that. And I do think that's something that I should kind of acknowledge in myself and be proud of, I guess. And, you know, the only way is up now, really. I'm so much better at just, like, I'm, I'll straight away be like, if you need to ring me, ring me now, where I never would have thought I'd be that person. And hopefully I'll get to a point where I can do 
you know, bigger meetings and even talks or um, group things and being able to meet you guys. Because I do think I would like to do a talk. Um, I just don't know if I'm, I'm there yet. Another highlight, um, more of an art one, would be the miniature houses. I loved doing that painting series. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And I think that's given me a thing now that I'll just kind of draw forever. Like whenever I need an idea or just something to draw, miniature houses are just, they're always there. Another highlight would have to be the World Cup. Um, I don't know if I even talked about it that much in vlogs. I definitely had footage, but by the time I'd edited it, um, the World Cup was already over and we were already out. Uh, but that summer, it was huge and it was really kind of cheesy in how it brought everyone together. There was just a really amazing atmosphere. I don't know what it was like outside of London, but where around where I live, everyone is kind of like everyone's smiling at each other in the street. Everyone's in on the same joke. Um, it was just an amazing summer um, of sport and us getting so far was I know, it's kind of like what we needed with everything that's going on here in the UK at the moment there's so much tension and stress it's just something that brought us together at least briefly um yeah I really enjoyed that summer of sport I really enjoyed the world cup this year I enjoyed screaming at the tv and and just that that hope that we all had at least for a few weeks Another huge one has got to be my sister's award. Um, still can't really wrap my head around how proud I am of her for that. And also, you know, being able to be that close to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. It's just one of those experiences that, saying it out loud now, when I look back at this year, so many different things that it's so weird to think I've been able to do and see this year. All of that culminating to moving out, which I didn't really, picture for myself I don't think this year um just kind of happened and it's been amazing and I love this place I really really do um I feel so happy here so all in all it's just been a really momentous year uh kind of ups and downs a lot of just coasting through but the highs have been really high and the lows haven't been that low so yeah I can't I can't complain it's been it's been a good one no, I have nothing but gratitude for all the amazing things that I have been able to do and experience and see this year. You know, when I actually stop and look back at it, it's really mind-blowing. And um, I'm really grateful for all the people like you guys that have been there along with me. Um, all the support and just understanding from everyone along the way, um, even through the ups and downs and inactivity and doubt and everything like that. Um, it's been a good one for sure. I've got more of a greeny blue here and I'm kind of scared to just use it down at the bottom. Right, I think I might leave this one as it is or at least close to this. I'm pretty happy with this one. I think all it takes is one or two paintings to start out with, to start that painting practice with, um, just to kind of get you warmed up, which is why I'm, I wasn't too bothered about that first one not necessarily turning out how I wanted it to. It's so much easier to just try new things with paintings when you go into it as just a practice and a way to test out a particular idea or just something that you wanted to try. Yeah, I think I'll leave it. Um, take it as a sign that my camera's running out of battery so that I don't overwork it. But yeah, I just want to finish this off by saying thank you to all of the people that have 
been here this year and to anyone that's been here longer and to anyone that's just joined it's been a journey and um a fun one and I'm actually really looking forward to 2019 I'm feeling a lot more just a lot a lot better um going into this new year than I did um going into 2018 so I'm looking forward to it I hope you do join me for whatever 2019 has to offer but other than that I will see you uh in the next video and in the new year happy new year guys (laughs) 